Well, hello, people of the internet, fellow bikers, wannabe bikers. It's been a little while since I've done a riding video, and now I've got this new microphone. Hopefully, things are going to sound just a little bit better than they did before. And I haven't been out for a decent ride in quite some time. I've been doing all these things to the bike, getting the, the rear lights sorted, the indicators, and it's just nice to be back out on the bike. So I'm going to my parents today. It's, uh, it's Saturday afternoon. And Thai green curry is on the menu. They live out in the Cotswold, which is a beautiful part of the UK. So it's a fantastic ride, even though my wife is coming, she's in the car, and I'm gonna take the bike. So I've had a bit of a trauma on the bike this week. I did manage to get out to nip to the shops the other day. And you may have seen, I think I said in one of the other videos about these low down uh, Magnaflow Arlen S exhaust pipes, you know, love them to bits, but one of the problems with them is it's quite easy to to catch catch them on the ground. Um, I've done it before and I did it five minutes after I completed the wrap. Um, so I'd only, I'd only literally just put them on the bike, first test ride out, bang, grounded them on a roundabout. And I've been really careful since then, to be honest. I've really tried uh, to get my my boot heel down and, and stop uh, stop the dragging. Uh, did it again. Did it again the other day. And I knew I just went into this roundabout a little too quick. There was a bit of an adverse camber and they hit the ground. Stayed on the bike fine, but it, uh, it tore the wrap really badly. And I didn't actually realize until uh, I, I just going down the motorway, I caught in my mirror and I had a trail like two meters of wrap dangling out the back of the bike while I was going at 80. Uh, I mean, I, I started to think of the physics of what would happen if that piece of wrap went under the rear tire. Uh, and I guess one or two things would happen. Either the, the wrap would rip or if it had enough strength in it, I, I guess. I mean, it could it potentially pull the exhaust off or you know, throw the, bo throw the bike down on the front. I mean, I, I dread to think what would happen. So I had to pull over and do a bit of tucking to get past this guy. So I had to do a, a little bit of tucking uh, at the side of the road to, to make it right. So uh, yeah, I've had, to, I've had to put an order in for some new wrap. I thought, do you know what? I might as well do the top and the bottom. And I've done a temporary fix. I don't think you can see that. But I've kept the wrap at the top and re-put a tie on the bottom. Just so that I can continue to ride it until the, the stuff arrives. Yeah, I'm doing a, a video of re-wrapping the exhaust. And uh, it's quite cool in, in some respects because I've always wondered what happens to the metal like underneath the the wrap, I'm a lot of, I guess I've heard people say, oh, it just totally ruins it, totally rusts it. Um, and there is a little bit of pitting from what I can see so far. So next weekend, I'll, I'll have got all of that finished and I'll put up the video so you can you can see that and, and see, I guess, my process for putting putting the wrap on. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So quite a lot has happened in, uh, in the last few weeks. I turned 30. Um, a lot of people say and, and said to me that, you know, when you turn 30, it's it's difficult, midlife crisis, I guess. Sort of midlife, 30's not really midlife, is it? But it was fine, I mentally don't feel any different. I still feel like I felt when I was, uh, I guess when I was 21. But it got me thinking, and we, I went to this place called Centre Parks, which is like um, it's like a country retreat. You stay in in a lodge. I had uh, ten of my, my good mates with me to kind of help me along with a, a bit of sport and a bit of drinking. 
And I guess if I had to boil it down to two things that I think, uh, I guess, have changed for me when I've hit 30, the first thing is that I just can't handle my drink anymore in the sense that, you know, in my younger days, two, three, four nights on the, on the trot, of going out drinking, partying, no problem. Now, I go out on a Friday and have, I don't know, four pints, five pints, and that's it. That's my weekend gone. It takes me that time to recover. And I think the second thing, which maybe is a little deeper, I guess, you know, for me, when you're younger, you wanna be good at everything, right? You know, at work, in sport, in life, I just always felt like I wanted to be the best that I could at everything and I'd really um, beat myself up if I wasn't able to do something to the level that I wanted to. And I think now, for me... I'm just, um, I'm just more accepting of the fact that I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. And that's okay. Ooh, that's a nice sport sportster. Hmm, <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, for me, I mean, one of the the other great things about having a big birthday, you get loads of cool presents. And boy, oh boy, did I get some good presents uh, this time around. So my wife has excelled herself, and my present from her is I have got. Uh, a flight out to Germany and she has hired me a Z4, BMW Z4 with professional instruction on two laps of the Nürburgring and then I have the car for half a day to tear ass around the track. How cool is that? <laughs> So I'm going to be doing that in June, and I just cannot wait. It has just been a dream for me to race uh, that track. Um, second thing that uh, I got was uh, I've got gliding lessons, as in like glider plane lessons. So I've got to book those in. I think I might do that in the next couple of weeks. But that's really cool, going gliding. Ooh, that, my friends, is the exhaust. Number two, good job I didn't put the new wrap on. Woohoo! Oh, this is one of my favorite pieces of this road. I love this. So you go down this hill and it's such an extreme little camber. Here we go. Oh wow. It's like a roller coaster. Yeah, I could totally see myself living in somewhere like this. Maybe one day. It's just so goddamn expensive. So before I sign off fully, I'm going to, on the way home, when it's pitch black, just show you guys what the LED headlight, the one that I fitted a couple of weeks ago on that fitting video, is like in the pitch black of the country. Um, at night time because I haven't actually seen it yet in those kind of conditions. So um, in a couple of hours, in the magic of time, you can have a look at what that looks like. 